What's up guys? This is Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com and today we are going to learn Ajax. This is probably going to be a two-part video because this is going to be a little long. But um, whether you guys know Ajax or you've never learned it before, I'm going to do this slow. So if you know Ajax, I'm sorry. This is going to be a little slow, but I want to make sure that nobody is left behind on this one because I want the people who have never even seen Ajax before to know 100% what the hell is going on. And I want the people who know Ajax to get a really good refresher on all of the things that they are typing so that when you actually write those Ajax requests it'll make a lot more sense to you because you'll say oh I gotta do this and then I gotta do this and I gotta do this and I know why I have to do it because it makes sense to me so this is gonna be more of a fundamental video and showing you guys why you want to use Ajax so so far I'm pretty sure you guys understand the reason why we have Ajax is you know this loads and this goes away but let's say we had a big ass image in here. So we have a huge image of a gallery thing that we made. And we didn't want this image to have to load for every single user that came to our page. And we only wanted it to load if the user wanted to see it. How do we know the user wants to see it? They click this button. So we only want to show it if the user wants to see it. That's a great way to use Ajax because that means when the user goes to the page for the first time, they will never see that image. The source code would never load that image. So this would all be gone. It wouldn't be there. But then if they want to see that image, then you would click this and then Ajax will go out. It will grab the source code of that image. It'll spit it back in like a hundred milliseconds and boom, it's on the screen. It will literally be as fast as this is. It will look instant. Ajax is one of the coolest things you will ever learn. So, in this video, I'm going to teach you one of the coolest things you will ever learn. So, the first step of doing Ajax is, like I said, when you click that button, it's going to spit out to another URL, grab all the source code, and bring it back. So what that means is, we do not want this code here. We want this code in another URL, so that Ajax will be able to spit out, grab it, and take it and throw it back. So we are going to X this out, so I hit Command or Control X, and now I'm saving my document. And now I'm going to come and I'm going to make another file, and I'm going to call it uh, lightbox.jsp, and I'm going to put that source code in that file. So it can be an HTML, it can be a PHP, whatever extension you want to use, it does not matter. Just put it in another file that's in the same directory of where your other files are. So I'm going to come to web content, and I'm going to go new, JSP file. And I'm just going to call this light, L-I-G-H-T, B-O-X dot JSP, finish. And if your IDE or wherever you're working with gives you a whole bunch of code, I want you to delete everything in there. Get rid of it. And then I want you to paste in your code. So what this will do, I like to make everything tidy. Keep it tidy. So what this will do is when you click this button, it will jump to lightbox.jsp. Ajax will jump to lightbox.jsp, grab all this source code, and he will come back to index.jsp, and he will spit it back in the div of our choice. So all that code, he will spit into a div. So what we need to do is we need to make a div that we want to spit it into. So just say uh, div id and let's just type in ajax result so this is where our ajax will spit back all our light box it will spit back that light box and it will plop it in this div so now when the user comes to our page all they will see is this div id they won't see any of that other stuff so in order to do the ajax that we want to do for this page we need to come to our javascript.js file and we need to delete all of this stuff because what we have in here currently is not utilizing Ajax. This is just document.gelelement by ID. So you need to delete that, and now we need to start using Ajax. So what this will do is when the user clicks this, it, they will go to all of our source code here, and it will utilize Ajax. So now we've done the first step of putting our content in another file. The next step about Ajax is you need to get an Ajax object from the user's browser. In order to do that, first we want to initialize our Ajax object. So I'm going to type a lot of code and I'm going to explain it afterwards. So just type in var Ajax object is assigned null. And then type in if uh, window.xml http request and type in Ajax object is assigned new xml http request 
empty parens, semicolon. And then tell else if, and let's say window dot active x object, then we want to ajax object is assigned new active x object Microsoft dot XML HTTP. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to type in this tutorial is if Ajax object does not equal null, do this. If it does equal null, do this. Alert, you do not have a compatible browser. Okay, we just typed in a whole bunch of code and now I'm going to explain it. So, what we know so far is when the user clicks this button, so when they click, click here, they are going to go to the show lightbox function in JavaScript. So now we are in the show lightbox function. The first line of code says we want to create an Ajax object and we want it to be assigned null. And then in here, we are going to check the browser of that user. So what this is saying is if they have a browser, so if their window is taking in XML HTTP requests, then we want to configure our Ajax object to be an XML HTTP request. But if their browser is taking in ActiveX objects, we want to configure our Ajax object to take in ActiveX objects. A good example of what browsers would do this would be Firefox. A good example of what browsers would do this would be Internet Explorer. So, this is a way of making sure that our Ajax object will be configured correctly for which browser the user is using. So if they're using something like Firefox or Chrome, they will see this line of code and their Ajax object will be configured this way. But then we have an else if, so if they did this, they won't even go to this line. But if they didn't do this, and if they're an Internet Explorer browser, then we'll see that they have ActiveX objects, and we will specifically configure our Ajax object to take in ActiveX objects. This is, this is a way of configuring our Ajax object before we do anything with it. Now, what happens if the user doesn't have a compatible browser? What if we initialize our Ajax object to null, and it checked this if statement and it said, nope, that condition isn't true. And then it checked this if statement and says, nope, that condition isn't true. Then what we do is we say, then we do this if statement. And in this if statement, we're going to write all the code that we want to do to what we want to do with that Ajax object. So actually going to this lightbox.jsp file, getting that information, getting it back. So all of that is going to be contained here. But it makes no sense to do all that stuff if the user didn't have a compatible Ajax object. So that's why you put the if condition here. So if they have a compatible Ajax object, we're going to do stuff in here. And if they don't, alert the user and tell them you do not have a compatible browser. So I hope all of this code now makes sense to you. So in the next tutorial, we're actually going to write what we want to do if the Ajax object was configured correctly. So thank you for watching. This has been Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com. And in the next tutorial, we are going to complete this Ajax series, and our Lightbox will now be working with Ajax. So stay tuned for the next tutorial, and thank you for watching.